What's up, Motivation? It's your girl, Britt, from the media team. Pastor Jay just had a crazy message. If y'all missed it, I suggest you go take a look. Check it out now. Matthew 26, verses 47 through 54. And even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. And they had been sent by the leading priests and elders of the people. The traitor, Judas. Man, this is so good. The traitor, Judas. The traitor, Judas. Judas was a traitor. Traitor. According to Matthew, Matthew says, the traitor, Judas. Matthew writes, and he says, Judas was a traitor. Matthew looked at Judas, and he labeled him a traitor. So the traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. What up, rabbi? He exclaimed and gave the kiss. And Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Matthew called him a traitor. Jesus calls him. Y'all read in the Bible that I'm reading. Go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus, Peter, Simon Peter, Peter, thug life, pulled out his sword and struck the high priest slave, slashing off his ear. Put away your sword, Jesus told him. Those who use the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us? And he would send them instantly but if I did how would the scriptures be fulfilled that described what must happen now some of y'all slow but worth waiting for let's go to verse 53 don't you realize that I could ask my father like I have power when I pray so when I ask my father Thousands of angels would come and protect us, and he would, he would send them instantly, squad. Verse 54 says, but if I did that, somebody shout, but. But if I did that, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? I want to take a few moments, and I want to, preach from the subject you did me a favor somebody just shout you did me a favor you can be seated in the presence of God at the risk of destroying this spiritual moment there is a popular dating show on YouTube called pop the balloon or find love. For many of you, you saw my t-shirt and you laughed instantly. For others, you're like, why does he have a picture of Pastor J. Cross on his on his shirt? <laughs> and in this dating show on YouTube, there's this one episode in particular that has seemingly went viral and has the attentions of millions of people all over the world. And it's, it's been titled the Ninja Turtle episode. Some of y'all laughing because you watched it. But for those of you that aren't young and hip like me, uh, side note, if you have to say hip, then you're old. Uh, but in this particular show, it's set up where you have seven people lined up uh, holding a red balloon in one hand, and they're holding a little toothpick in another. 
And so they're standing there waiting, and they are looking for their potential future. And this person, before the person's real, they just have the camera on the host and the seven people waiting. And, and the goal of this is if you're interested, then you keep your balloon. But if you're uninterested, then you pop it. And so when this particular episode starts, before you see the man coming out, you see the seven ladies standing there. And all of a sudden, before you see him, all you hear is pop, pop. That means immediately on sight. I'm not interested. And so the host gaslights it because then what she does, the, the man came out. She said, hey, tell us your name. How old you are? Where you from? And he's like, my name's Anthony. I'm 29 and I'm from somewhere. And he tells where he's from. And she's like, okay, that's interesting. And really what she's saying is, let's get to the good part. And, and rather than just let the person pop their balloon to show that they're not interested, they take it further and they take you over to do an interview. She takes them over. Jay, she does an interview. She says to the lady, so why did you pop your balloon? And this is where it gets good. Uh, she says, well, you know, um, well, you know, I just think if we're going to date and we're looking to find love, he just, you know, just not my type, not anything, you know, physical attraction. And he says, I understand, queen, the feeling's mutual. And she's like, okay, well, you have a good day. He says, you too, queen. But he says something that was interesting. He said, thank you, queen. You did me a favor. What he was really suggesting is that by your rejection, you saved me the time of having to discern. By how you acted towards me, I didn't have to waste my time trying to figure you out when you, by your rejection, made it easy. And I came to talk to some mature saints to let you know that what God is trying to do in your life is show you favor in a different way. This is why I told you that favor is not always going to be wrapped in what you think. Sometimes favor will reveal itself in rejection. Sometimes God will allow favor to come in a way that you can't see it. And sometimes God will have to usher you out of a season that you would have stayed in if he allowed you to be comfortable. Do you realize God had to allow some things that you might have liked to be popped in your life? Because if he hadn't popped it, you would have got comfortable with it. Some people have started families with people they should have popped. Uh-oh. Not, not, oh, God. Some of y'all are slaves to jobs that you should have popped. But God is trying to deliver you and bring you to a place of favor. Somebody shout favor. And so we see this, that in the life of Jesus, I love this, because Jesus being the greatest example shows us two parts that all of us have to experience. We have to understand that Jesus is fully God, but we can't forget and overlook that he's fully man. So while Jesus is fully God, fully God means that he did everything that God does. That the heavens and the earth and the stars and the angels and the sun and the moon and, and the dirt and the dust and every hair or lack of on your head is because Jesus, just tell somebody, Jesus did it. The Bible says everything that was made was made by him and through him. And without him, nothing that was made was made. So we understand that as God, everything is made for his glory. We understand who Jesus is. We understand that he is fully God. But obviously, we forget when we go through problems that he's also fully man. This is why when we go through stuff and we have a worldly response, we say ignorant and ghetto things like, try Jesus, not me. Because what we're really suggesting is that Jesus acted in a way that he didn't expect us to act. 
Oh, God. So, so what Jesus does, he comes in full flesh humanity, and he lives a life that is hard for us to live. He lives a life that's exo- endowed by the power of the Holy Spirit to show us that if we live led by the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. He shows us that if you put your faith in God and you follow what he says and you fully trust him, You can do what Jesus did while you depend on him. The problem is many of us use Jesus' divinity as a scapegoat so we don't have to be obedient in our humanity. So Jesus comes and he's trying to mature us to show us the way that when we put our faith in him, we can live a life that's pleasing to the father. It's going to get deep, I promise, but it'll get good in a minute. So Jesus now, although he had the heavenly experience as God, now he's having an earthly experience as a human. And in his experience, he goes through some stuff that all of us understand, all of us can can connect to moments and seasons of life that doesn't seem fair and we have to recognize that fair does not mean God has not given us favor somebody shout favor So what's seemingly working against you, God has a way of showing you that it really can work for you. And in this particular text, I only need a few minutes, I promise, because we're doing some surgery today. And I want you to think, I really want you to think critically about your own life and the own season that you're in. Because God is not always going to usher you out of a season because of what you're feeling. Sometimes God wants you to sit in your feelings so you can grow faith through through your feelings because maturity is not God delivering you sometimes maturity is being able to sit in it and allow God to have room to sit in it with you do you realize when God allows you to go through seasons that you don't understand he has a way of showing you favor even though you don't see it as favor because if God allows you to go in something it's not that he's trying to destroy you he's trying to prepare prepare you to let you know that he's going to get in with you. How do we know? Because we have the the example of the Hebrew boys. They get thrown into the fiery furnace. The Bible says they're in there. They're wrapped up. They're tied up. But one of the interesting details about that text, when when King Nebuchadnezzar, who represents the devil, when the devil, when the hater is looking inside and he's like, hold on, why do I see this? Come here. Didn't we throw in three? And they're like, yeah, we threw in three. He said, well, come peek in here and look what I see. He said, I don't see three anymore. I see four. And didn't we tie them up? But now I see four men loosed in the fire. Oh, my God. Do you realize sometimes when God wants to show you favor, he won't let you just be in it, but he'll be in it with you. The Bible says that when they were in the fire, not only were they in it, but they were freed in it. They went inbound, but while they were in it, he gets in and now they're free. Do you realize that God, when he's got favor over your life, he will give you freedom in the fire. And the Bible says that while he was there, he looks in and when he calls them out, they come out and they don't even smell like smoke. Oh my God, the residue of the last season was not on them because God was covering them. That's why you come to church and you look as good as you do and people are shocked when they hear what you've been through it's not because you're so good it's not because you've been great it's not because you've been faithful it's simply because God has matter of fact the reason you don't smell like what you've been in and look like what you've been through is because he's been covering you somebody shout I'm covered And the covering is the favor, okay? You don't like that? There was a man by the name of Daniel who was thrown into the lion's den. And the Bible says while he was in there, they were waiting for the lions to devour him. They starved the lions so they'd be extra hungry. So that by the time Daniel touches down, that he would be destroyed. But because Jesus got in there with him, what would have ate him was full. Oh my God. 
God. What would have destroyed him had to reject him because he was covered. Okay, some of y'all sitting here and you like, well, maybe they just weren't hungry. Well, the Bible says that because they didn't eat him, when they took him out and they put somebody else in there, they started to devour the same people that put him in. What am I saying? What I'm saying to you, favor is really a platform for God to show his glory. And it might not seem fair, but it is favor. Somebody shout favor. All right, let me teach it a little bit. Somebody shout favor. And so what we learn through the life of Jesus is that Jesus was the greatest example of favor. But I want to mature you because I think that a growing church is a knowing church. And it would be one thing if I told you God's giving you favor and there's a car on the way. God's giving you favor and you're getting a new house. Y'all would shout. Y'all be like, preach, Pastor Jay. Y'all would. But can you praise God when I tell you that favor is painful? Will you come back to church? Will you, will you stay focused when I tell you the next level of favor is going to be uncomfortable? It's going to seem unreasonable. And here's the problem. Many of you right now, when I said favor, some of y'all originally tuned out because you thought this was going to be cotton candy. You thought it was going to be popcorn. Oh, we're going to shout today, favor. Ah, and you was ready. But there's some of you now, you're leaning in. Why? Because you're trying to figure out, how can I have favor when it seems like everything's working against me? How, how do you say, how dare you? You don't know what I've been through, Pastor Jay. You don't know who did what to me, when and how, and I'm a good person and I don't deserve this. Well, yes, you do. You do. Because if God has a plan, uh-oh. God has a pain. The first thing I want you to write down, because 90% of people who take notes when I preach go to heaven. The first thing I want you to write down, we see in verses 47. Uh, somebody pull that up for me. Verses 47, we, we see it here. It says, and even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12, arrived with a crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. And they had been sent by the leading priests uh, and the elders of the people. Go to 48. And he says, he says, the traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Write this down. First thing I want you to write down. Number one, God uses betrayal to bless you. Uh, I'm going to mature you today. I promise. Uh, God uses betrayal to bless you. You got to understand this. That Judas's betrayal of Jesus, it was fulfillment of the scriptures. And because Jesus was aware that this was necessary and he acknowledged that it was part of God's plan, he had to stay patient. Oh God, can I, can I, can I just touch your shoulder? Can, can I just tap that shoulder that gets you frustrated and talk about patience for a minute? The reason many of us keep going through the same circle and cycle is because maybe God's trying to develop patience. Yeah, every time you don't get your way, every time it doesn't move according to your plan and timing, every time it gets rough and uncomfortable and a little bit itchy, all of a sudden you get frustrated, overwhelmed, question the things that you knew because you lack patience. This is why God, in, in his understanding, uses trials and tribulations to develop patience in us. I, I love this because not only does God use betrayal to bless you, but he uses adversity to advance you. The Bible says something interesting, and I think this is really where we can land, and I want you to pay attention. Because if you miss this, you will miss everything. You will miss everything. If you... 
Don't write this down. And pay, you will miss this message will sell if you don't pay attention to what I'm getting ready to tell you. Will you will miss everything if you don't pay attention to this? Look, look at this. We just read it in verse 50. He calls Judas friend. Jesus calls Judas friend. But in Matthew 16, pull that up for me. In chapter 16, verse 22, he says, but Peter took Jesus aside. Jesus was telling him, hey, this is, I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to give my life. No man can take it. I lay it down. I'm going to raise this temple up in three days. I'm going to go prepare a place for you in my father's house. And many mansions, if we're not, so I wouldn't have told you. I would never lie to you. So you don't have to worry about giving your pastor in Mexico some money for a house in heaven. Because I've already prepared one for you. So. Uh, Y'all missed it. So, so don't even worry about it. I got you. And Peter responds, and he says, Jesus. He starts going off. He says, you reprimand it. He's trying to check Jesus. What happens when you try to check Jesus? He's trying to check God. He says, heaven forbid, Lord. This will never happen to you. This is the guy who's showing Jesus love. He's like, Jesus, I got your back. I'm your dude. I, I stay strapped. I'm ready, Jesus. Watch what Jesus Says in verse 23, Jesus turns to Peter and he said, get away from me. Oh, y'all, y'all, I want to make sure it's not my, what's it say? Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Oh, God. Jesus calls Judas' friend. And Peter, Satan. Uh, he, he's, he's calling. <laughs> this is going to be good. He's calling uh, the one that's trying to please him a problem. But the one who's trying to play him an answered prayer. Which suggests that maybe we're not seeing it properly. This is why Jesus says... You are seeing this merely from flesh. Let me help y'all. Come here. Because favor ain't fleshly. And the reason you can't see Peter and you can't recognize Judas is because you only see through the eyes of flesh. But favor is not fleshly. So can I submit to you that maybe what God is trying to do in your life is he's trying to give you a place to appreciate Judas and reject Peter. Because some of y'all are trying to praise Peter and kill Judas. And the problem with that is Peter loves you too much to let you move into destiny. Judas don't care about you, so he's pushing you forward. Come here, let me talk to you. There's some of you that got to stop fighting and complaining and fussing about your enemies and start praising God for the Judases in your life, for the Judases at your job, for the Judases that you dated. Why? Because it seemed like they were working against you, but they were really working for you oh let me help you because Peter will tell you you look good in something that doesn't fit you because they don't want to hurt your feelings Peter will tell you you're good at doing something you're not good at just to keep a smile on your face but the Judas is in your life they're like that's why your wig's crooked oh yeah y'all know <laughs> You, because your friends love you and sometimes they're trying to keep you from crucifixion can I go deeper can I go deeper see Peter loved Jesus so much that he said I can't let you be crucified let me tell you what Paul says in Corinthians Paul says if Christ had not been raised from the dead then our faith would be futile our faith would be powerless because if Jesus had not been raised from the dead, then we hadn't been raised from the dead. And if we hadn't been raised from the dead and Jesus hadn't been raised from the dead, then we'll still be guilty of our sins. And we would need to be pitied more than anyone else in the world. So he says, I'm grateful that Jesus was crucified because there would be no resurrection without crucifixion.
There couldn't be crucifixion without a cross. There would be no cross without a Judas. Oh, my God. See, Peter, you got to see this, because Christ now, the Bible says, we will crown him with glory and honor. And the reason we crown him with glory and honor is because we appreciate him getting up from the dead because of what he did on the cross. But Peter's not responsible for what he did on the cross Judas was this is why you have to celebrate your Judas because Judas will lead you to the crucifixion so that you can get your crown and there's many of you that are waiting for your crown but you're too comfortable with Peter and you won't be crucified let me tell you who Peter is Peter's not the one who will let you be crucified Peter's the one who will coddle you Peter's the one who keeps making excuses for you Peter's the one who lets you be comfortable where you been but I'm grateful for every Judas that turned their back it hurt when they turned their back it hurt when they lied it hurt when they didn't get me the way I got them but if it had not been for the Judases we wouldn't even have a motivation oh God let me stop oh, just tell somebody thank God for Judas so you got to realize that what God is trying to do he's trying to get you to understand favor from a different lens somebody shout favor, favor. so so he uses betrayal to bless you look at the second thing in verse 51 let's pull it up verse 51 says but one of the men with Jesus Peter pulls out a sword he strikes the high priest's slave's ear and cuts it off verse 52 says uh put away jesus says put away your sword because those who use the sword will die by the sword watch this for verse 53 and don't you realize that i could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly here's what i want you to so right now, second thing I need you to see is God's power is revealed in pain. God's power is revealed in pain. This gets deep because Peter is trying to defend Jesus with a sword. He's trying to protect him. He's trying to keep him alive. He's trying to keep him breathing instead of allowing him to die the problem is uh, God is revealed in the places of our pain Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 y'all write it I'll read it 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 he says my grace is sufficient and my strength is made perfect in your weakness so Paul says, so I'll boast in my weakness because when I'm weak, you're strong. And, and the only way I really can see favor and I can see God's power is when I'm in pain. Let, let me show you a different way. Uh, I was working out with Brian. Shameless plug, if you need a trainer, go see Brian, go see Deacon Earl. Uh, we have some great trainers in this church. And um, what's that? Thing I called again? Drop set. That's it. Uh, let's drop that set. I, I don't like it. Because what it looks like, it's like 10,000 weights on each side. So I sit on the machine. It's a whole bunch of them. And I get to the machine. I'm looking at him like, oh, you're joining me today. Like, this is for him. This ain't my workout. And I'm looking at this like, there's no way I'm going to be able to push this. He literally puts like 10 different weights on each side. And the goal is to do 15 reps or 15 pushes, whatever they call it. Push it 15 times. And, and then after you do it 15 times, he takes one off each side. And you got to do it. So that's like 100,000. <laughs> and so I'm looking at it, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm stalling. I'm trying to figure out how am I going to get out of this because it looks like too much weight. I'm trying to remind him, hey, man, we're we, we just getting started, and I, I'm not fully ready, ready to go. Th that's a big commitment for me because that's a lot of weight, and, you know, my shoulder already hurts, and I got a basketball game. I'm trying to figure out 
step up. I'm trying to figure out what I can do to get out of lifting this weight because I think it's too much for me. But because he's a good, good trainer, he knows what he's been developing in me. So he understands what I don't. And he has to push me past what I set my own limits for. So he says, I hear you, Pastor Jay. Now do the set. Respectfully. All right. So I sit down. Takes me a second. Stretch. It'll be, how was your birthday weekend? I'm, I'm trying to get out of it. I'm trying to wait for the session to be over. I, I want him to look at his car and go, Pastor Jay, yo, man, we, we got I want him to end it. I want the close of this season because I don't want to go through this wait. But, but he said, Pastor Jay, it was good. Got to push the weights. Uh, all of a sudden, Hold it, Pastor Jay. Ah. I push through it. First set, weight off. Second set, weight off. Third set, weight off. Fourth set, weight off. I got my swag. I'm pushing it. And I'm like, but I don't want to make it feel easy because I don't want him to think I did it too easy and add more weight. So I'm just, uh, but I'm pushing, right? Watch this. When I'm done, I get up. What's the first thing you do when you do a weight? You go look in the mirror and be like, ah. Try to see if you're bigger immediately. But watch this. Here's the thing. The reason that that was so significant is because he's showing me that I'm stronger than I thought I was. And the only way I could see the strength that's been developed from my trainer is by going against something that I thought was stronger than me. Let me talk to this side. See, some of y'all think God is for you just because things are good. And then you think God's not for you because things are hard. But maybe God's showing you that he's for you when things are hard because years ago, you would have thrown the towel. Years ago, you would have stopped coming to church. Years ago, you would have stayed high. Years ago, your hangover would have been your excuse. But because God has been strong in you and developing character and developing his character and developing something in you, you're able to see him in you in a way you would have never seen him before. So sometimes pain displays the power of God that's active in your who am I talking to in this room that you've been through some moments and some seasons that you didn't know how you were going to get out you didn't see your way through you didn't think God was listening and all of a sudden God sent a suddenly in your life have you ever had a suddenly moment where you don't know when it changed but you woke up and it was different you woke up and you felt better you woke up and you thought different you woke up and everything was turned around somebody in this church is getting ready to walk into your suddenly you getting ready to experience life differently because whatever's coming against you is not really working against you it's really working oh my god who am i yeah, you, you didn't see it because you saw the pit. You didn't see it because you saw the prison. But come here, you want the palace. And God says if it wasn't for the pit and it wasn't for the prison, you wouldn't be in position for the palace. So you immediately will come. Why? Because favor was not on Joseph but because of what he had on. Favor was on Joseph because who he had in. And I think there's some Josephs and Josephines in this room that got something greater that's why the bible says let's go greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world because what's in me is working for me and it's getting ready to work through me so that i can see the power of god manifest in my life somebody shout favor, favor. his power is revealed in pain and here's the key the reason Jesus was able to go through this public humiliation this public trial this public pain is because of his private prayer life 
this betrayal comes right after he prays. Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, he's praying to the Father. He says, Lord, he says, if it's your will, I don't want to go through this. That's the remix. He says, let this cup pass from me. But then he pauses and he's, that's, that's, that's his humanity. Because I told you he was fully God and fully man. In his humanity, his prayer was let this cup pass. But in his divinity, he says, not my will, but your will. Oh, my God. He, it's, on, it's following the fact that he just prayed. And some of you don't understand the power of your prayer. You prayed some stuff and then hell came. You trusted God and then trials came. You done tore the church up and you went home and your house was tore up. And you're trying to figure out how could I be in God's presence, leave and experience his lack of presence. Maybe your problem, I preached it before, is the answer to your prayer. <laughs> oh my God. Because Jesus said, not my will, yours. Then hell came. Maybe his will to show you his favor is hell. And hell ain't to kill you. Hell is to demonstrate he's with you. Let me prove it and move to point number three. How can we prove it? Because what would have killed somebody else? You smiling in. What would have destroyed somebody else? You're living in. And they trying to figure out why you look so good going through all that. Somebody shout because I got favor. Point number three. We see in verse 54. Let's go there. Verse 54. In verse 53 he prays and he's, he's talking and Peter's asking Jesus. He's like, yo, what's, what's good, man? And, and Jesus is like, yo, I could call the father. And he would show up and I'd have heaven having my back. But watch what he says. He says, but, oh, God. Ah, let, let, let's read this again. Jesus says, but, can I pause here and just bump your neighbor at the risk of offending them? Say, God got a big old butt. Go ahead and tell them, God. Because, because the truth is, every now and then, God will interject your desires yeah. with his butt. Sometimes God wants to butt in. Sometimes God says, but. See, he could do it, but. He would open it, but. He would release you, but. He would stop it, but. What does he say? But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen now? In other words, here's point number three. God uses what we wouldn't. To do what we couldn't. I was a rapper in my former life. God will use the things that you'll never choose to do what you never could. God will use things that are crazy to calm the chaos in your life. God will use things that don't match or make sense to bring you to a place of destiny. God has a way of using things that are confusing to confuse the enemy. God has, I'm going to say it till you get it. God has a way of picking things you'll never pick. God has a way of choosing things you'll never choose. God has a way of using things you'll never use because the truth is, he says, if it doesn't happen this way, then how? Oh God, if it doesn't go down like this, it won't go down because you want my plan to be pretty. That's where we are. We miss it because we want the plan to be pretty because we think the pretty plan is an indication of the promise. But when you see that the plan is not pretty, you have a greater appreciation for the promise. 
That's why when that, this is why God's maturing you, because when you get to the place of promise, you won't be egotistical. You won't be self-righteous. You won't be judgmental. You'll have compassion on other people. And even if they don't understand you, you understand you because you know what it took for you to get to where you are. You know what you had to go through to become who you become. And so you won't let any judgmental church person, any fake Christian, fake news, hating family member, devil in hell, jealous supervisor, ex, you won't let nothing pull you back because of what you've been through to get to where you are. Who am I talking to in this room? You've been through some things that you can't even explain, but at the end of the day, your testimony has been God is faithful. Somebody just shout, he's faithful. He is faithful. He uses what we would never choose. Think about the worst seasons of your life. There are some things we all experience that most of us wouldn't wish on our worst enemy. And we look back and we're trying to figure out how did I survive that pain? How did I survive that betrayal? How did I, because can, can I tell the truth? The, most of the hardest pain is from places where you least expected it. Come on, can we be honest? Most of the worst pain of our life is from places where we didn't expect that pain would ever show up. So we were vulnerable and we were trustworthy and we gave people, watch this, and because of love, we were blind to their character. And what do you do? What do you do? Watch this. C c can I just help you? I told you it's surgery. We're going we're gonna to close. Uh, let, let me, what do you do when you try to help someone that doesn't have character? What do you do? You know what we do? We try to out good bad character. And the problem is when you're dealing with people with bad character, the problem is not what you do. The problem is who they are. And no matter what you do, they'll never see it. And because they'll never see it, they'll never appreciate who you are to them. Watch this. Can we go deeper? And who you really should be to them. Because you don't treat them like everybody else because you have compassion. And so now you've allowed them to become close enough to you to betray you with a kiss. So when my enemy swings on me, I expect it. But not what my brother does. When an ex comes at me crazy, I expect it. But not what my spouse does. Figurative. Don't look at Pastor Ray. She's good. <laughs> Y'all like, what? Uh, <laughs> but the reality is, the problem is many of us, we're going through pain because it's come from places where we least expected it. And Jesus showed us something. He said, sometimes, if you're not mature enough to handle this message, watch what will happen. You'll leave and just be cynical over pain. So you'll just say, Man, I don't trust nobody. I don't have friends. If you live and say, I don't have no friends, something's wrong with you. Come on. I just can't trust people. People, be yeah, they are, but not everybody. And the problem's not the people. The problem's with how you're picking. Their character hasn't changed. You just don't have discernment enough to see it. Let me go somewhere else. Uh, so I'm saying this to you to say this. That what God wants to do in your life, he wants, to, he wants you to recognize favor differently. And if we start to understand favor differently, it will change the way we respond in our seasons that seem unfavorable. 
So thank you for the car. Thank you for the house. Thank you for the babies. Some of them. Thank you for the job. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the list. But I have another list. I have a list of pain. I have a list of disappointment. I have a list of things that I just don't understand. You ever been in a season where you don't understand God? It doesn't make sense. Okay, I got three. Let me see. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, I got nine, 12 people. All right. Sometimes the truth is we don't understand God. We don't understand his why. We just see his what. But maturity doesn't always give us understanding on the why. It doesn't always bring, bring healing to the what. But it does give us clarity on where. Because he shows us through our pain where he's taken us to. And the one thing I've learned is that the things that we've experienced and overcome, God will use to feed us for our future. I shared this and we're going to pray. Uh, and I, can I be vulnerable with y'all? Can y'all handle it? I was vulnerable at nine. We got the internet. The whole world's watching. But can I be vulnerable? Can I be personal? I don't have to. I, I'll skip it. Okay. Um, some of you know, many of you don't. But when I was a kid, uh, I was physically abused. And because I went through this abuse, uh, you know, I was like seven. I started when I was about seven years old. And I went through some stuff. And... Um, it impacted me in ways that I didn't understand because you're a kid, so you kind of compartmentalize some trauma, right? And it shows differently for different people. So yesterday, me and my oldest daughter, Jaden, we went to the mall. We were chilling and, and, you know, having a good time. So we sat down for lunch, and I don't know how we got to this conversation. But we started talking about some stuff. And, you know, one thing I'm learning as your kids get older, your conversations change. And there's conversations I'm having with her now that she's a young adult that I didn't have with her in a way when she was younger. So we're having this conversation, and I mentioned to her how we got there about the abuse I went through. And she's looking at me like, Dad, how did you? So she's got all these questions, and, you know, in my mind, I'm like, wow. And she said something to me that uh, challenged me, and it made me think. She said, how did you, like, survive it? How did you come out and you're like not angry? Because I told her the person that did it to me. Now, we still have a, we have a great relationship. You would never know that I went through that stuff with that person. You would never know. And I'm, I'm literally healed, like for real healed. Like, I don't even have the residue of the feeling of anger and all of that, right? But hear me. So we're talking about it, and, and as we're unpacking, she asked me the question. And I'm sitting there like, well, you know, I was a black kid in the 80s, so you didn't go to therapy. Black people didn't go to therapy. You just go in the house, put some ice on it. You know, that's it. You don't, that's therapy. Pray and God will deliver you. But that, that was the therapy we went through as a little black kid. So we didn't do that. So I'm trying to figure, I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like. And in my testimony, I said to my daughter, I said, I don't know. God was just good to me. Can I tell you this? That there are, there are seasons of your life that the only thing you can come out and say the best way to explain it is that God has just been good. I, I can't explain how this works. I can't explain how I got from here to here. I blink and I look back and I'm like, I don't remember. But what I know that God was good. But his goodness is not based on the situation being good. His goodness is based on his character being consistent. Because his character was consistent. When I look back, I'm like, well, yeah, it wasn't fair. Yeah, I could look and I could try to get mad and I could blame God. Say, why would you let me go through this? God, I was a kid. I didn't deserve that. God, da 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 da, -da. I could do all of that. But you know what God does? When you start seeing his goodness, he starts giving you compassion and empathy. And because of it, it didn't excuse what they did. But I started to go, wait a minute. This happened to you. Oh, you were on drugs. Oh, you were a victim of it too. Oh, you didn't have an outlet. Now, I'm not excusing you. But it gave me an understanding of compassion for where I am now. 
because I couldn't pastor you without compassion. I'm saying this and we're going to pray. If you start seeing favor differently, you'll realize the things you experience that even the painful things, God's using them for future glory in your life. This is why I can sit down with you. I've sat down with so many of you in and out of the church. And they tell me the wildest, craziest things that would make other people look at them, make other people want to fight them, would make other people want to judge them. And I can look and have compassion. Having compassion doesn't excuse people. But it helps you see beyond the problem. Because most issues start with pain. So I want us to start looking at this differently. Because God's doing us a favor. He's showing us favor by allowing us to overcome the things that should have overwhelmed us. Can we stand and pray? Did this message bless anybody today? Didn't I tell y'all that message was fire? Man, if y'all want to support Motivation, here's the options below. I just want to say thank you for supporting. It's your girl, Britt, and y'all have a blessed week.